example, we're going to use the conjugate zeros theorem to write polynomial functions. Defines a polynomial function having only real coefficients and if a plus bi is a zero of f of x where a and b are real numbers, then a minus b is also a zero of f of x. In this example, we're asked to find a polynomial function of least degree having only real coefficients and zeros 3 and 2 plus i. So we have two zeros that are given to us, and we are told to find a polynomial of least degree. So, so far we have two zeros, three and two plus i. However, by the conjugate zero theorem, if two plus i is a zero, then two minus i must also be a zero. So we have three zeros here. 3, 2 plus i, and 2 minus i. So we can go ahead and write this as a polynomial of a degree 3. That would be the smallest degree of that polynomial of least degree. So writing them as linear factors, remember we, gotta, we have to write them as x minus k. So in other words, write them as opposites. So when we write it, we're going to have f of x equals x minus 3 times x minus 2 plus i, x plus 2 plus i. Now, the next thing we've got to do is we're going to have to distribute or simplify the 2 plus i and the 2 minus i. So, Again, writing it as x minus k, if k is 2 plus i, and the other one, x minus k, if k is 2 minus i, the fact that these binomials have a negative in front of them, we have to change everybody inside to their opposite. So it becomes x minus 2 minus i, Again, because it has that negative there, you have to change the sign. This one is going to become x minus 2 plus i. So once we simplify those binomials, our next step then, uh, and yes, it may seem like a lot of work, is we're going to have to multiply these out. Uh, so that we can uh, have our polynomial written in standard form. So we can start by multiplying the two trinomials first, which means you're going to have to distribute the three terms to each of the other. So Based on your prior knowledge from uh, the class before this one, 1033, you should have uh, learned how to multiply polynomials, specifically multiplying a trinomial by a trinomial. So you can multiply all the terms on top. And one helpful hint, you can go underneath, but you have to make sure you multiply all the terms. So when we multiply that out, this is what we're going to get. We wind up with a trinomial of x squared minus 4x plus 5. Next, to multiply that further, you're going to multiply the trinomial with the binomial. And again, you should have prior knowledge of how to multiply polynomials. That's going to give us a final answer in standard form of f of x equals x cubed minus 7x squared 
plus 17x minus 15. And there you have it, the conjugate zero theorem. In this example, we're asked to find all the zeros of the given function, given that 1 minus i is a 0. So recall by the conjugate zero theorem, if 1 minus i is a 0, then 1 plus i must also be a 0 of this function. So now we know we have two zeros. However, if you look at this function at the leading term, this function is of degree four. So that means we only have two zeros, the one plus i and the one minus i. We need two more zeros. So in order to find those two zeros, we're going to have to uh, use the synthetic division to find the remainder of zeros. Now what you can do is definitely use the uh, rational zeros theorem of the P over Q. In this case, it would be 12 over one and find any zeros uh, within there. Or you can start by just trying um, to plug in one of the functions that you have and allow it to uh, give you the quotient or the polynomial of the other. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's just take the one minus i. It really doesn't matter which one you take because we know that both of them are zero which means that when we do this uh, and you do it right, you're going to have a zero as a remainder. You shouldn't have anything else. Whether you decided to plug in the one minus i or the one plus i, they're both going to give you a zero because you were given that at the beginning. We know that. What we're trying to find is what are those other two zeros. So once you find the quotient of it, you can factor that quotient and be able to find the other two zeros. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to bring down a 1, multiply that with 1 minus i to get 1 minus i. Combining the real with the real, that's going to give me negative 6 and bring down the negative i. Multiply that with 1 minus i to get, let's do that, first outer, inner, last, first, outer, inner, last, next, combine outer and inner. Once we combine outer and inner, we're left with negative seven plus five i. All right, um, keep in mind everywhere you see i squared, we didn't do the uh, full breakdown on that. Remember, I squared equals negative one. And when you combine negative one with the negative six, that's how you get the negative seven. But anything that you don't understand with complex numbers, you're gonna have to go back through some videos uh, teaching you how to uh, add, subtract, multiply with uh, complex numbers. So anyway, let's go ahead and bring that down. Combining the real with the real, we're going to go ahead and uh, bring down the 11 and then bring down the plus 5i. Combine that, excuse me, multiply that with 1 minus i. So when we go ahead and do that as well, first, outer, inner, and last. Remember, everywhere you see i squared, replace it with negative 1. Combine everything together, and what you wind up getting, you combine the real with the real, the imaginary numbers with the imaginary, that's going to give me 16 minus 6i. Bring down the real as well as the imaginary there. Multiply that with 1 minus i, and that's going to give us 
let's do that first outer first outer inner and then last combine outer and inner and also everywhere you see I squared replace with negative 1 and that's going to give you negative 12 and as I said before we already knew that it was going to give us a zero if you do the math right uh, because we were already told it's a zero here's what we wanted to know we wanted to we want to know what our quotient is so right now it's really big when it's this long the best thing to do is to go further so in other words get an, the divisor of another the other zero and go one more step further with the quotient so that you have a much shorter simplified answer so we're going to go ahead and use the one plus i but we started remember with where we left off in blue not the original okay so continuing where we left off and using the other given zero and again we already know when we do this one that we're going to get a zero as well because we were told is a zero we just need to do the math because we're trying to get the other two factors in a much shorter form so go ahead and bring down your one multiply that with one plus i to get your one plus i bring down the negative five when you combine the real with the real and the imaginary with the imaginary multiply that with one plus i to get distributive property here negative five times one is negative five negative five times positive i is negative five i combine bring down a six multiply that with one plus i to get let's do distributive property six times one is six and six times i is six i subtract and again that gives you a zero which we knew now we have our answer in a much more simplified answer so what you see here in magenta is your quotient so the original term here was a, a fourth degree uh, then we went down for the first one in blue that's a third degree then we did it again one more time and this one would be in pink of second degree so that would be x squared minus 5x plus 6 is my quotient for the last uh, synthetic division problem that we solved Okay, so the last thing we need to do with this problem is to write it as linear uh, factors and then identify all the zeros. Uh, so recall at the very beginning we were given x minus i and we know that by the conjugates uh, zero theorem that one plus i is also a zero. So to write it in the form of a linear factor of x minus k, you would just write it as x minus and then in parentheses put one minus i and then x minus and in parentheses one plus i uh, and then also we have that quotient that we just found from the synthetic division so everything is going to look like this uh, but we can simplify that trinomial further we don't need to do anything with the first two terms there but the trinomial i do believe that factors into two binomials so let's go ahead and do that uh, factor that into two binomials and so now uh, we have everything written as linear factors it's just a matter of now of identifying okay what are those four zeros we knew from the beginning because this polynomial 
is of a degree four, so therefore it has four zeros, four roots, or four linear factors, which you see here. And to identify what those zeros are, uh, one of the zeros is x minus i, the other one is x plus i, uh, and the third one, what do you think that is? That's correct. If you said two, that you're right. And then so the other one, you know that then it is three. And those are our four zeros of this polynomial function. And there you have it, finding the zeros of a polynomial function. Okay, that's it for this lesson. Thank you for watching MVP Tutorials by your instructor, Dr. Spates. I hope you'll join me in the next lesson. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Goodbye for now.